you know. Conspiracy theory has a very interest as a pejorative has a very interesting etymology. Um, in 1967, the CIA unleashed a memo or memorandum to a number of editors and publishers and people who had influence because there were so many people balking at the conclusions of the Warren Commission. And the memo or memorandum said that we need to we need to uh, define these people as conspiracy theorists. And then it gave a number of points on why conspiracy theorists are bad and how their intentions are ill-fated. And that's where, and it, it's kind of interesting, conspiracy theory or conspiracy theorists was in the media occasionally, but once that memorandum came out, the mainstream media... It, 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 th that those terms exponentially rose. I mean, it's, yeah, it's yeah. It, amazing. The wealth polarization is an mm -hmm. indication yeah. that yeah. the rich are making the rules mm. in acquiring wealth. Mm -hmm. And you did a show on whether or not the Manchurian candidate actually exists. Mm. What, what, are, what are your thoughts on Manchurian candidates? The the people that, that we talk to who actively were like psychologists who used hypnosis for therapy and things like that. They said, look, you can't, they were kind of, I remember if I remember correctly, and I could be wrong, I haven't watched the show in a while, but I remember they kind of were, were a little like, it could be done, but it would have to be done under such a very specific set of circumstances and for such a long period of time that you, you it's not something that's just easily accomplished. You can't just kind of put somebody under hypnosis and send them out to kill somebody because even if you're under hypnosis and and I and seeing it happen for it like firsthand when we were doing the show where one of our staff members was put under and the moment that this person said walk with a limp or talk with a lisp, they started doing it, you know, and then when they kind of came out of it, they equated it to the feeling of like times when you've you've drank too much and you kind of have a blackout, like you're, you're being blackout where you just don't really remember and 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 because I remember they got put under in the afternoon and then they woke up at like the early evening and they're like, where did my day go? And they're like, well, we got video of you walking around the office with a limp. And but what the psychologist had told us who was doing it had said, your morality is still maintained. Like, even though I can tell someone or I can influence someone under hypnosis to, let's say, talk with a lisp uh, or walk with a limp, I can't say go choke Jesse Ventura and they will. Because there's a still your body has a subconscious morality. It's still at work. Your mind's still still working. However, they did say under enough time and under enough manipulation, you could conceivably do it. And we all know that through MK Ultra and and what the CIA was experimenting with back in the in the in the fifties and and sixties and seventies and things like that, that they were trying to to do this. We we've learned that through I think it was the Church Committee that uncovered uh, a lot of their experimentation. Is that again? It's one of those things we don't know if they were successful, but they were definitely researching it. And I think when you look at at you know, there's a lot of people say that Mark David Chapman, who shot John Lennon, was a Manchurian type candidate. They say that Sirhan Sirhan, uh, he claims today that that he was a he was under the influence of other people in that capacity. So, you know, is it possible? I think so. Um, you know, but I don't know if we've really gotten to the bottom of how successful they, they they possibly were with those things, or if it's still being done today. We don't know. On my podcast, I've talked to uh, one mind control survivor, and then also uh, therapists, psychologists, and, and a psychiatrist that work with uh, people who claim to be mind controlled. And I think that there's a tremendous amount of evidence for um, mind control. It's interesting, most of the people that say that they've been mind controlled are dissociative identity, have dissociative identity disorder, which, it, which is called multiple personality disorder. And those people are the easiest people to hypnotize. So the state of the art would be creating different alters and hypnotizing different alters for yep. different functions. I think that we're there now. I mean, I think that that is definitely happening. Well, um, and you look at, you know, I like to look too, is it like mind control on a mass scale as well? I mean, yes. you look at modern advertising, or if you go back to the the original creator of kind of modern advertising was Edward Bernays, 
you know, he figured out through, I think his uncle or, or his he uncle was, related, was Sigmund yeah, Freud. Was yeah. Sigmund Freud. Yeah. And, and he kind of looked at what the research that Sigmund had done into psychology and said, Hmm, I bet I can use this to kind of manipulate people to buy certain things or manipulate masses of people to kind of at least initially go in a certain direction. Um, so when you, when we talk about mind control, it's in front of us every day, you know, advertising is mind control. What do they tell you? They tell you that you're not, you're not pretty enough. You're too fat. You're too this, you're too that. Hey, buy this product. You'll feel better, you know, and it creates a Pavlov's dog kind of effect. And, and, you know, so manipulating people to get them to do what you want is, is something that happens every, every day. It's in front of us. I always say as a writer, uh, words are magic. You know, you write something in a book, you say the right thing, you say the wrong thing that can influence the people around you as if you're casting a spell with your words, you know, just off, just off how you treat people. You see it. If I treat people mean every day, they're going to give me a bad reaction. If I treat people nice every day, they're going to be, that's still a certain amount of minute, you know, that's casting a spell on people. That is manipulation. Well, okay. you brought up Edward Bernays. It's kind of interesting. Our government hired him to do the PR when we overthrew the Guatemalan, the Guatemalan president. Yep. And he was involved in all kinds of other nefarious activities. It's kind of interesting. He took Freud's thought and basically he was the fountainhead of public relations. Joseph Goebbels had all of his books. Mm -hmm. So he had quite the reach. Yes, he did. He changed history dramatically. Absolutely.